We are going to use the weighted mean instead of the mean when observations have varying levels of importance. Usually that's because observations are representative of a larger group of observations who are unobserved. So in this formula, we are going to denote the fact that the mean is weighted by this lower case uh, or this subscript W, W for weighted, X bar for the mean. So this is the weighted mean. The numerator of this equation is the is the, the sum of xj minus wj. That's the sum of the observed data values times the weight of each data value. And on the bottom, we have the sum of all the weights. I think it's easiest to understand all of this in an example. So imagine the case where we are trying to figure out the average IQ level of students in geography. Uh, in order to calculate this average, we suppose that that IQ varies by the year of study in the program. So freshmen, uh, so what we do is we sample one student from each year in the program. We sample a freshman, a sophomore, a junior, and a senior, and we give each of those four students an IQ test. And we record the IQ of those four students in this table. Now. We could simply take the average of these four IQs, and if we do that over here, so we take the average of these four IQs, and we find that the average is equal to 111.3. But why isn't that a good estimator of the average IQ, student, uh, IQ of students in the program? The reason is that each of these IQs pertains to a different kind of student, and we have different numbers of students in each year. As you can see in the frequency column, we actually have 250 freshmen, 200 sophomores, 150 juniors, and 100 seniors. So when we calculate the average IQ without taking into consideration these weights, we're giving equal importance of the freshman IQs. Well, we're giving equal importance to each of these IQs, but really we should be increasing the importance of, say, the freshman and sophomore IQs, because we have many more of those types of students. And we should be decreasing the influence of these junior and senior IQs, because we have far fewer of them. So in order to do that, we are going to, uh, we are going to uh, calculate the weighted mean. I'm just going to rewrite what each of these values are, uh, what each of these columns are, so that it that matches up with the equation. Our IQ is our X's, okay? There are XJ's. And we're going to have a J column, one, two, three. So there's four J's. IQ is our XJ's. Our frequencies are the weights that we're going to use. These are our WJ's. And then the weighted IQ is XJ times WJ. So to get this, we've just done 105 times 250, or over here we've done 125 times 100. That's how we get this weighted IQ column, the XJWJ. So once we've calculated this, these values, the numerator of the equation simply asks for the sum of those four values, which we put in to the fraction over there, 75750. The denominator is asking for the sum of the weights which is just the sum of these four values. So the sum of those four values is 700. And we put that into the denominator over here. When we calculate the average now, we find that the average IQ of students is 108.2. So the average has actually gone down when we consider the fact that there's far more freshmen and sophomore with lower IQs in our sample than there are juniors and seniors.